The first speaker will be Lily Tespadan, who is executive director of the IT cluster. The second speaker will be Peter Sliad, the business development director at Exigen Services. And the third speaker will be Andres Bedzing, chairman of the board at TechHub Riga. Um, each of them will give a short 10 minute presentation. And following the presentations, we will have the opportunity to ask you a few questions. <coughs> Thank you very much. Good morning. I took an opportunity to come exactly to the front, so not to lose the time. So welcome you to Riga. It's such a perfect weather. I mean, working Monday weather, because last night we had a gorgeous weather. We will have it again, don't worry. So it's a pleasure to see all of you here, and it's an honor to present IT sector. And also, it's an honor, and I would say, for me, it sounds much easier to speak after all previous presenters, Prime Minister, Minister of Economy, Mr. Uzos, because so many good facts have been said. So if you will hear something repeating from my side, I will briefly just stop and then skip it. But that confirms that that's true, because I am representing NGO sector, which is not really just the state institution or private business, but something in between. So as you, as you heard, my name is Leota Sparana, and I'm now I'm for six years uh, managing an uh, IT cluster. Before that, for nine years, I got uh, experience and knowledge working uh, with the World Bank. So, but now IT cluster is uh, here in Latvia known as a stage or a meeting point for a private business, for a high uh, technologies uh, companies, uh, uniting all of those and uniting R&D institutions, universities, and many other partners. So today I will try to briefly inform you what we are doing because IT sector is not the the most important only in Latvia. It's important everywhere because it supports all kinds of sectors and it's more considered as a cross-sectoral uh, sector for support of the development. So if we talk about the uh, today and the future, but we cannot forget the past. So we did not invent a PC. You know who and where and when did invent a PC, computer, but we did something else in electronic field. And let's just uh, briefly turn your attention to a few facts. In 1937, the first portable radio device was created by industry leader at that time called WEF. It stayed for State Electronic Factory. And also in 1938, the smallest spy photo camera, Minox, was invented. And today, somehow, we are comparing ourselves all the time with the Germans. I don't know why, but I should say they are a good neighbors. And also, this camera was invented by the Latvian, German Latvian. So, and it was produced till 1943 in Latvia, in the, also in the web factory. Uh, but during the war, World War, it was transferred to other countries. But nowadays, we are proud that we have all this highly developed infrastructure. Already it was mentioned that we are in the fourth place in upload speed and seventh place in the download speed of internet, and also top six low broadband tariff in the world. And we are proud that we have very high penetration of broadband connection, and we are above con uh, neighboring countries, Lithuania, Estonia, and also we are above an EU 27. So IT sector in Latvia is a very, very strong and developing very fast with the highest value added in Baltics, growing at around 15% per year, M working more than 20,000 employees here, and also the industry is paying tax from the fall budget about 6%. Main directions, it's just a few main directions where I want to touch upon. So software development or engineering, and of course including the modern things which are very well known in the world. It's e-platform and mobile app development, also implementing many internet B2B solutions, uh, payment card system very worldwide known, and as mentioned already, company till the localization. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are focusing on many, many other sectors, including all those e-government, industry, cross-cutting, and other specialized solutions. So why should you trust Latvia? From my perspective, I could say quality, quality, and again, quality. And quality covers all of those things which you can see on the slide. 
So that's a knowledgeable and experienced workforce uh, who owns quality and industry certificates. And our people are very responsible, are accurate, are flexible, and also not just like we also love to compare us with a specialist from Asia, and we could say our people are very innovative. And if they are leading a project or a project team or working within the project team, they definitely will come to you with an innovative solution, with some kind of idea what could save your resources. And you definitely can trust them. So a lot was said about already about the uh, knowledge of, um, of languages and also proximity to all countries around us. And also, we are very proud that we have most competitive labor force in IT services in comparison with, with the neighbors and also with EU27. And that's also our concern that we need more and more ICT specialists. So we are working already with the primary schools, with the secondary schools. We are informing them, we are telling them what you can do with IT, not just you can play a game on your mobile or on a PlayStation on your PC, but you can do a great business, you can have a good job, you can have a very good salary at the end, and you can have opportunities to work also abroad, not just within this country. So we are trying to attract those people to our universities. We have more than 15 higher educational establishments with 44 programs in different kind of levels who are teaching IT. And also we are very proud that, for example, this year, a group of students from University of Latvia in international worldwide, worldwide competition took from 118 student groups, they gathered the 18th place in the world. So we can say the University of Latvia IT faculty is one of the 20th in the world. So we are proud of it and we will continue to work with our young generation. And also they are now very much interested in IT just because they understood that IT also it's so easy to start as a startup, not just to work for others. And our companies, our companies have very many international customers and our softwares, for example, for the bank and card payment systems are very well known in the four continents. Insurance solutions are implemented in Scandinavia, Azerbaijan and other countries. And as it was mentioned, we are the members of EU and NATO. And before the entering these systems, actually there were strong requirements. And all requirements were fulfilled by IT companies from Latvia. So we know how to work internationally and we also know what does it mean international quality. And I would like to mention also that we are very strong in e-government policy and developing e-solutions for uh, citizens, for uh, businesses, for e-government institutions. Already in 1998, we started with, uh, we introduced information policy. And so now we have a new e-government e plan and we have a, a special portal for e-services for all kind of users, www.latvia.lv, through which you can get to all kind of e-services which are available in Latvia. And until 2013, we have a plan to offer to citizens, inhabitants, guests, to businesses, more than 262 e-services here in Latvia. We also do care about the security. We have established IT security incident response institution, which is a, you can find under the www.cert.lv. And they are really, that's a real authority working with the awareness of public, working with the cases also internationally recognized. And that's a member of FIRST. It stands for Forum of Incident Response and Security Team. So, and we are working on a daily basis with them. And that's established by the uh, University Institute of Mathematics and Computer Sciences owned by University of Latvia and in cooperation with the Ministry of Transport and Communication. 
So that's quite a lot of uh, text and facts. I love the presentation of Mr. Ozos because he is giving you a colorful pictures and just a few texts, but IT people, they are so suspicious that it's not easy to understand the IT sector. So that's why we are trying to, pull, put, to put as much information as possible for you to read afterwards if you download the presentation from the LIA website. And now just a few cases. It's really going to be just a few cases. We have much more, many more to talk about it, to show you, and so on, but the time is limited. So just a few cases. We have established for the Ministry of Interior Affairs and for the Ministry of Justice e-police system. An e-police system is introduced in Latvia, and now we are having negotiations with the government of Brazil. Maybe it will be implemented there as well. And even thought we will go, we went deeper, and we connected this with biometrical data system. So you, those who are going to visit some IT companies, you're going to visit DPA tomorrow as well. So you will hear much more about those opportunities. And as I said, our companies are working cross-sectorally, and we are covering e-health, e-health in the state institutions, e-health in the private sector. And this company called Bluebridge Technology has invented this system in Medicus Formula, and they are having offices already in United States, in Michigan, they have in Spain, in Germany, and UK, and they are offering quite a substantially good good solution for e-health. So, and they are looking for a new corporation partners and also foreign investors. We have a companies who are working on mobile applications, for example, NFC, which stands for Near Field Communication, which really helps uh, to effectively control HR, uh, uh, HR uh, people uh, and the systems and tracking and security and so many other things. Tilde was mentioned already by the Mr. Uzos as a special company who is working on the localization of small languages and doing machine translation, voice technology, speech technologies, and so on. We do care about culture. As you heard, our country in Riga is a, uh, accredited by UNESCO, and in 2014, Riga will be as a capital of culture, UNESCO ca uh, capital. So we also established e-system to have e-museum uh, system available on the internet because only 5% from all treasures or values kept in museums are available for us. The rest 95 always are kept in storages and no one knows what's and where we can get it. So we established a system which really allows you to take information and to see what's available and where and that should be also connected with the neighboring countries and later on we go to Nordic and so even even wider. It was mentioned already about Real Sound Lab. Real Sound Lab is a great company, and uh, Mr. Ozos has touched up on them, so I won't say a lot more. And we have a company who is offering also business in U.S. now, and it's called DIOC, but DIOC is a data center, special data center, one of the biggest in the Baltics. And they have a specific case, which you're also going to visit tomorrow. They have this only underground data center built in the previous bunker of Soviet army. And that's kind of exciting. But at the same time, all companies who came here from the Western Europe, they said, yes, that's a more than 100% sure, because it's also unusual. FDIs in IT sector, as you saw, it was more about three, more than 3%, but it's coming more and more. About exogen services was mentioned by Prime Minister, and my colleague will speak a bit more about it afterwards. Uh, Accenture, a large company, and established a branch here, and now more, working more than 300 people who are serving countries like US, Scandinavia, UK, Germany, and many others. Tito has to be mentioned just because it's a special case. In 1992, 20 years ago, that was established a small company, small medium enterprise, who started to produce software for the banks, 
and for a card payment system. It's called CONTS, and CONTS introduced the first payment cards here in Europe. So afterwards, they negotiated with a Tito company from Finland in 1998. They joined the company, and now they are worldwide now. As I mentioned, we have many startups, but that my colleague Andres will talk about it. And all of our achievement will be seen at the Riga Demo Center, what we are going to open on the July 4th, but also tomorrow. For a few of you who are coming, you are very welcome. We will have a pre-opening session with our all companies. So, and also honorable councils will come on the July 6th to see all achievements what are done by IT in the IT companies here in Latvia. So we will talk with you later and during those days. Thank you for your attention and once more, welcome to Latvia. Thank you. Thank you to Mrs. Sparane. Our next speaker uh, this morning as part of the IT panel will be Peter Sliede, the Business Development Director at Exogen Services. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as, a, as already mentioned by several speakers this morning, um, Exogen Services is an excellent example of a successful investment of U.S. Uh, company in Latvia in IT industry. Um, uh, Exigent Services is uh, a global company uh, founded 12 years ago, and uh, it's privately owned. Uh, we have uh, almost 1,500 uh, IT high-level specialists, and we are a software development, IT outsourcing, and business uh, improvement uh, company. <coughs> Our uh, Key industries are insurance, banking, we serve also uh, telecoms, media, and also government sector customers. And in the list, you see uh, quite a few names that are global large companies. <coughs> uh, our company has been uh, recognized by uh, many uh, industry uh, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, leaders, and we are included in uh, several lists. For example, in the Global Services 100 list, um, we are in uh, International Outsource uh, International Association of Outsourcing Professionals list, and also for three years in a row, we were included in Inc. Magazine 5000 list. Um, Exigent Services is a truly global company. Our headquarters are in the uh, in U.S., in San Francisco. We have sales and uh, business development offices across the globe. And uh, our main development centers, as we call them, are in Eastern Europe, uh, but also in China. <coughs> a Riga Development Center is one of the largest and leading development centers. And uh, there are other centers in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus and Lithuania. Um, Exigent Services Latvia, uh, it's, that's a legal name of our development center, is also one of the largest IT companies in Latvia, or actually in the Baltics. And um, uh, Exigent Services, the global company, invested twice, actually. The first time it was in the year 2000, and then in 2004. Uh, apparently, the first was a successful investment. And now that both companies are uh, fully merged, uh, we base our business on uh, long-term cooperation with our uh, customers. In our export markets in the uh, United States uh, and the German-speaking countries, uh, Germany, Switzerland, um, our key industries are uh, insurance and banking. Uh, but in Latvia, our uh, key customers are in the government sector. Uh, just to name a few, um, the uh, State Revenue Service, or the National Tax Authority, uh, State Treasury, the National Parliament, the State Social Insurance Agency, are our major customers for whom we have built the largest domain systems. And we also focus on the banking sector, where SCB and other banks are our customers. <coughs> uh, so. To answer a question, why invest in Latvia, I would like to uh, quote uh, Mr. Greg Schenkman, our managing partner of Exigen Capital Company. Uh, uh, and uh, he said basically that uh, 
the key benefit was acquisition an extremely professional resource pool at a price that is less than in the West, that the Latvian business infrastructure is modern, and that EU, so as a Latvia, as a EU country, enjoys the benefits of being uh, a European uh, working in, in, in Europe. <clears throat> and I'd, I'd like to mention just one example of uh, how we work with our customers. Uh, I'm sure most of you know AAA, uh, an American company, and um, uh, this this uh, particular um, regional uh, organization of AAA uh, is Exogen customers since 2009. And the the business challenge the customer had was to uh, streamline the business processes and reduce operational costs. And the interesting fact is that they tried twice already and lost huge amounts of money by working with uh, major global IT vendors. And they failed. And Exigen Services was able to develop the system in time with a much, much lower cost, uh, implement in two states, and a rollout to 22 other states is planned. And, uh, and uh, I, I also would like to highlight how we work. Um, the customer-facing teams uh, are located in the United States. In Latvia, our development center uh, provides value-added services like project management, business analysis, and system testing. And we also manage the teams in China and Russia. <clears throat> and therefore, uh, the best mix of, of cost and benefit is achieved by using on-site uh, near shore and offshore, offshore resources. Um, thank you for your attention. That was a brief highlight. Um, <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Mr. Sliede. Our final presenter in this morning's panel on the IT industry is Mr. Anders Berzinch, Chairman of the Board at Tech Hub Riga. Good morning. <clears throat> so, um, Farmers to tech startups. So uh, um, what I'd like to tell you is a little short story, some vignettes more, more I'd say, about how Latvia is becoming one of the locations where the new Skypes and Facebooks of the world are being born. And uh, it has something to do with our farming origins. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Latvian who grew up in the West. I returned here uh, for a few years, then uh, went to Stanford Business School, enjoyed the Valley, which seems to be the hallmark for the uh, air conditioning this morning. So feel free to remove your coats if it's too hot. Um, and, uh, and then spent about a dozen years working in tech startups um, in the US and Europe. And one of the things that I think uh, is important for why Latvia is enjoying a renaissance in the tech startup world is our farming origins. We work harder, uh, we're more tenacious than others, and that is a very important thing when you're trying to build something that is brand new, that's never been, ne that's, that's never been created before, um, uh, and, and is, a, you know, is a product you don't know what you're going to build, who you're going to sell it to, and how you're going to sell it, and that's your job as a startup to figure those things out, and that requires uh, that tenacity that, uh, that uh, farmers have. So uh, uh, a brief note about Tech Hub. Uh, Tech Hub, and here's uh, your, 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 your Ambassador Gaba uh, opening the uh, Tech Hub space back in February. It's quite a recent announcement. Uh, Tech Hub is a co-working space, a non-profit, where we gather the best startups in Latvia um, who uh, both work there and we also run events. And um, it's quite uh, remarkable in some sense that Tech Hub, which is a London-based organization, they started in London, selected Riga as the first in international outpost. Uh, they came over here uh, and they saw that excitement, that hard work, and realized that this is a place where um, startups could really grow fast. So this is a quote from Paul Bragiel, who's a managing partner of IO Ventures, which is one of Silicon Valley's top startup accelerator programs. He was actually here uh, last week uh, on a tour through from Estonia to Moldova. And um, 
we had a discussion with uh, with uh, um, some people in, da in Daniel Pav Pavliot's team in the Ministry for Economics, and this was his quote. So he's seen teams applying to the IO Ventures Accelerator, and uh, you know, from a man with his experience um, in the startup world to say that we uh, we uh, uh, can compete with the best teams in the U.S., I thought was um, was uh, something I was quite proud of, and that's what we see. So. Um, I'll give you some examples um, and uh, uh, to, to give you an, an illustration of what's, what's up and coming. So these are the startups that you're going to see listed on NASDAQ in the next few years, I'd say. Right, so, so, so this is Cobook. Uh, for those of you who are in the, in the Mac world, use a, use a Mac, uh, look up cobookapp.com. These guys are revolutionizing the way contact management, uh, managing your addresses and contacts happens, uh, and they're starting on a Mac today. They'll be on other platforms too, but basically there's a little drop down, and here uh, I, can, I can get Peter Arvai's information, easily connect his LinkedIn profiles and everything else. And um, these guys are two programmers who worked in, uh, in a, in a Canadian-funded uh, startup and then came up with this, with, with, with this idea. And they ha they're, uh, they're in a German-funded um, uh, startup program doing extremely well. And this is something that your kids would be probably more interested in. Uh, we have a bunch of um, young guys uh, who are developing a new HTML5 real-time gaming platform. Now, in, in ordinary speak, this is basically uh, a solution that allows a game developer to produce a game on, on Android phones, on iOS, uh, Apple phones, and so forth, all using the same, the same uh, uh, platform and have it run on all of them. But actually, most importantly, have it run in real time. So um, I'm not going to ask you to raise how many of you, to, 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 to raise your hands how many of you play Farmville. There might be too many. Um, but, uh, uh, but I'm sure you have people um, that, that you know that do. Uh, so Farmville is a turn by turn game. Right, where someone, uh, one person, I don't know, plants the carrots and the other person buys them or whatever it is. Um, these are real-time games, which is something that's, from a, from, from a technology point of view, much, much more challenging to do. And these are a bunch of young stu uh, f former students from the University of Latvia who came up with this idea and uh, have just also entered uh, an investment program by SeedCamp, which is one of Europe's top investment programs for startups. Faster. So for those of you who have lots of dull reports to read every day, you need to download this app. It's brand new out on, on the iStore, um, and it's a speed reading app. And they have actually done quite a few tests already to, to, to show that they can increase the speed you're able to read, especially dull material, um, by something like uh, 100 or 2 or, 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 or even 200%. Um, and basically what they do is they pull phrases, and as you get better and better, the phrases become bigger and bigger, and you can visually process that information faster. So for those of you, I'm sure there's lots of you with lots of dull reports, so this is a great app for you. Here we have a company called Selfie. Selfie is um, a startup here that basically is powering these little buttons. And these buttons are important because what they are, they, they've created a a very efficient platform for uh, people who are publishing digital products. So think artists, photographers, uh, people selling uh, small programs on the web. Um, it's a sort of a small medium business solution and they make it literally easy to, for them to drag and drop a purchase tool on their website that allows them to, to sell their product online without an, inter in, with, with, without an intermediary in a very simple fashion. And um, their main problem recently is that some of their, 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 their customers are, are selling so much that they're trying to keep up with the server capacity. Um, but this is a, a great tool for, um, for, for di dig digital publishing. And so as a result of all of these, um, we're getting a lot of press coverage now. Um, we've seen a huge acceleration in the last six months of international press coverage of Latvian startups that are doing very well. Um, and alongside that, we're also attracting the interest of the top, uh, the, 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 the top investors and venture capital firms of the world who are now, uh, I, I was at a conference in Berlin a few weeks ago and, and, and Excel partners came up to me and said, well, when can we come to Latvia? We've heard so many good things, when can we come? So that's the result from uh, these young uh, uh, pe pe people who are, who are making these new companies. So thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.